So if I could, I'd love to start off with a joke. What did the DJ name their son? Eric? That'll come into play later, Meredith. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Steve, and everybody putting this on tonight. It was very apparent at an early age that I was outgoing, very musical and expressive. I was in the front row of every choir concert. Without a solo, I was the last chair in trumpet, but it didn't stop me. I loved going to school simply for the social aspect. I love language, arts, and believe it or not, I always got in trouble for talking. It was clear at a very early age that I was meant to be the first female president of the United States of America. Either that or host the Academy Awards and Saturday Night Live. However, when I found out how much SNL made fun of the president, it was very evident that I'd become the fourth member of the greatest female group of all time, Salt and Peppa. I grew up with these two men, Larry King, he's been in the business for over 60 years. In my opinion, the best interviewer because he's the best listener. This is Casey Kasem. He hosted America's Top 40 for over 34 years. I spent every single Sunday afternoon with this man. The gramophone, the phonograph, the record player, or the turntable sure has come a long way since the good old days of Tommy Edison in 1877. A DJ is defined by Webster as someone who plays music, recorded music, on the radio, at a dance hall, or an event. But the job description has come quite a ways since that time. The technical gear can include the wheels of steels, the ones and twos, or your turntables and your vinyl records. It could be on CDJs, keyboards, laptops, chaosolators, sound pads, the list goes on and on for you to manipulate music. But this is my mentor, DJ Bones, and he says, it's not what you have, it's how you use it. Now we've talked a little bit about it. gear. You need to build a music library and of course pick a name. What kind of name are you going to choose? Are you going to use your real name? Boring. Are you gonna somehow reference your ethnicity or your background or the style of music that you'd like to play? The possibilities are endless. Now we need to book you some gigs. Nobody knows who you are. You have no reputation. It's time to start volunteering. But my friends, I highly recommend that you keep your day job because you know what they say about volunteering. It doesn't pay. <laughs> so do DJs just press a bunch of buttons? The sound of the scratch was invented in the 70s by Grandmaster DJ Wizard. His mother was calling him to dinner. He was trying to stop the music, hence skipping the needle across the, rec the record Hence, the scratch was born. So yes, we do just play around, push buttons, and make a bunch of noise. Adam Wiles was bagging groceries and producing music in Scotland a few years back. He happened to write a little ditty for Rihanna called We Found Love. It made number one in over 25 countries. It was number one for over 10 weeks. Last year, you may know the name Calvin Harris, made $46 million. He makes 300,000 a night playing in Vegas. Now, according to Forbes magazine, this is the youngest, highest paid DJ. This is Avicii. He opened for a Madonna last summer. And Flo Rider used his song, Levels, for his smash anthem, Good Feeling. Last year, this 23-year-old made $20 million. So, can anybody be a DJ? What does it take? Are you a night owl? Are you musical? Can you carry a beat? Can you match beats? Do you have rhythm? Are you afraid of crowds? <laughs> Just like anything, it takes a whole bunch of practice, some hard work, and a little bit more practice. Now here's an unfortunate picture for Paris Hilton. She was playing in Paris and somehow started playing three tracks on top of each other. I don't know how she couldn't hear through her diamond encrusted headphones. Now, it is very difficult to match beats, but it's very, uh, much more difficult when you're not sober. Fortunately, the stage manager was there to clean up the train wreck before she got booed off the stage. Now I'd like you to meet DJ Ruth Myers. At the age of 57, she went to a club in Portugal to celebrate her grandson's birthday. She thought, that DJ is having such a blast, I think I could do that too. She bought some gear, and at the ripe young age of 73, she just played for the Queen of England and Lenny Kravitz. Now, wouldn't it be so fun to play for the queen? Yes, but let's start on a little bit of a smaller scale, weddings. You are gonna have to deal with bossy bridesmaids. You will deal with drunken grooms, and you might have to be the hero and save the speech after someone just goes drowning on the floor. 
You are dealing with families at their most extreme emotional states and high levels of stress. So now let's talk about requests. As a DJ, you're the only one who knows your entire musical catalog. It's easy to say no if you know a song is going to destroy the dance floor. However, there could be some inside jokes, so if somebody is telling you a request, it might be smart to listen, but it's hard to work them in. Now, you may be asked to speak at a career day at a middle school. Maybe you're going to be playing at a ski premiere at the Emerson, or you could be playing a father-daughter day dance with three hours of nonstop Disney music. You need to be prepared. You could play for the Gallatin Roller Girls. You could play at a drag show, a fashion show, or maybe even Burning Man. As a DJ, you control the mood and the energy of an entire room. You have the power to transport a couple back to their glory days by playing their favorite track. As a DJ, you get to create the environment of magic for someone's first kiss at a middle school dance. How are you going to shape these special occasions? As a DJ, you can make someone feel like the biggest stud in the room, sexier than Axl Rose in his prime. You can give people the confidence that they have the dance moves of Fred Astaire or Beyonce. You can let people lose track of time and give them the greatest night of their life. So are you successful? Well, success is very different to different people. For me, if I had it a successful night, I made you sweat, I made you sing, I probably made you kick off your shoes, and I got a wallflower to get on the floor. For me, DJing is more than picking out a song or matching a beat. It's generating connections through music. It's making a whole room fall in love, and it's for that one sweet, simple moment feeling authentically connected. For, to me, the most rewarding part is having the privilege to witness those rites of passage and being a part in the creation of the most unforgettable moments in someone's life. Thank you.